You know, we you know we had to start it off horror related. Oh, that's 100%. right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you had to get in the mood of horror, baby. That's right. Well, this yeah. channel celebrates everything, uh, Billy. Martial arts, action, horror, suspense. We love it all. But today we're sticking with that little bit of that horror today because we have in the movie dojo hanging out with your boy Samurai Guy today. We have Billy Hansen, filmmaker, director. Award-winning filmmaker director. I had to throw that in a little extra, which you know, earned some extra points there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, sir. Welcome to the channel. Thank you very much, man. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a we had to reach out and be like, you know, I gotta, we gotta do something. We gotta do something because what? What? <laughs> Your boy here, Preston. That's right, Samurai guy. I had to get my copy. I had to get my copy of Bone Cold, and I watched it. Uh, a couple of days ago, and brother, well done. Oh, thank you, man. Thank well you. Well done, my friend. Very. I'm well a little done. bit jealous. I haven't had a chance to hold a copy of the Blu-ray yet. I'm Ooh, excited I'm, to. I'm, I'm special. <laughs> 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 but yeah, man, really enjoyed it, and uh, we're gonna talk about a lot of the, a lot of it, and uh, you know I, that's why I got you here to get some some of the behind the scenes uh, info and news and knowledge. That's right, and we're gonna do our be very best to stay away from spoilers. Because yes. Samurai Guy wants you guys to go out and see this movie. That's right. That's right. So uh, who do we got in the house here? Uh, Brian Sanchez showing up, giving the thumbs up already. That's right. You got Brandon here throwing it up. Oh, That's wow. Right. Keeping, it, keeping it in metal. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are, you, are, you a, are, you a, are you a metal head or you like everything? A little bit of everything. I mean, I'm, I'm like a grunge, like 90s kid. So I'm very like Soundgarden- Yes, you know, Nine Inch Nails. Yes, Queens, Queens of the Stone Age is sort of like that's the sweet spot for me. Oh, so good. That's like that's my uh, best friend's favorite band of all time. And he yeah. was he was rubbing it in. He called me one day. He was like, "I saw them. I saw them live." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, fuck you, man. Uh, but <laughs> but nice. You have a great taste in music, my friend. That's right. Yeah, oh, yeah. You. We gotta do. Gotta keep it going. So for sure. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, let's, 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 before we start popping up some of your older projects, I want to see, you know, uh, the chat has to, you know, that way they get to see what you've done in the past. Yeah. Before we pop, before we pop that up, I got to ask, man, how did you get into filmmaking? When did you get the bug? When did you get the bug, man? The bug was flying around and like Spider-Man, boom, bitch in the arm. Yeah. Go, and you were like, I got to I got to do this. I was very, very young. I, I actually don't even remember when the initial bite happened, but I was really young. Uh, movies were always a big part of my life. Like my my dad used to have just shelves and shelves of the the VHS tapes that we had copied from the video store, and <laughs> like, just like three deep, several rows, you know. And uh, so it was always, you know, come home from school, pop in a movie, and uh, they were always a really big part of my life. And I was always a writer. I was always telling stories. Uh, and so it was kind of inevitable. I'd end up doing this for a living and, uh, you know, making my life about this. Nice. Nice. And you, you were, you started as a writer first and then you became producer and then director. Is that how it kind of went? It all sort of happened at the same time. Like okay. I, I consider, I was actually a musician before I was anything else talking about music. I played drums for a long time and, uh, and I studied music a lot. I was like a jazz drummer and then I was a rock drummer and, Oh shit. Uh, All right. Yeah. So I, I did a lot of that, but I ended up going to film school and, you know, cause I, I had studied music for so long. I was like, ah, I kind of, I kind of know music. Like I want to do this other thing that really feels like the, the long-term goal, uh, went to film school, moved to LA. Um, and yeah, I just kind of hit the ground running any, any opportunity that came up, I kind of jumped at it. I, I acted in a couple projects and very quickly realized I was not good at it and I didn't like doing it. So I was like, I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. Uh, but the, I've always been a writer. Um, I write lots of stuff. I, you know, I've written a book, I've written lots of scripts, pilots, movies, shorts, um, and then directing is sort of whenever I can, you know, directing is much harder of a, a job to do. I'm and sure, yeah. uh, producing, I just kind of do by necessity. I would rather not be solely a producer, but, um, you know, uh, I definitely need a producing partner on this stuff that I do. Gotcha. Gotcha. Copy that. Copy that. So yeah. growing up, growing up, I have to ask, what was some of your favorite movies of all time? Growing up? 
I was so yeah, nineties kid. So it was very much like the Lethal Weapon movies, yeah, Die Hard movies. Uh, True Lies is one of my all time favorites. Um, Alien, Aliens, you know those those. Oh staples. yeah, got the poster uh, right I, over there, twenty seven oh, by forty, baby. Beautiful. <laughs> I actually didn't even really get into horror until much later. Like most of my upbringing was like action and um, suspense stuff. Nice. Uh, you know my my tastes have changed a little bit but i still love those movies i still whenever oh, yeah. people ask my favorite movies i have a couple of my you know my french new wave answers and then i have my yeah true lies i love white men can't jump i love yeah 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 <laughs> yeah you know um but uh yeah that was that was a lot of my upbringing was those like big blockbuster action movies of the 90s nice oh those are classics that's an error that will never be duplicated they keep yeah. trying to <laughs> yeah but I, you know, I know how hard they must have been now <laughs> yeah right 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 well that's awesome man see we're brothers now you said lethal weapon true lies that's it <laughs> yeah and those are like those are such character driven stories in yeah. the, these big huge blockbusters like yeah that's right that's my forte right there I still don't know why True Lies is still not on Blu-ray yet. I don't. It's so yeah. That's kind of wild. It was hard to find for a minute, like streaming anywhere. And uh, you know, James Cameron, you know, because of the the success with Avatar and all that, uh, you know, he's like the biggest name ever. Yeah. But yet, but yet, True Lies and The Abyss, which I really liked. I'll yeah. Take, I'll take The Abyss over Avatar any day, but that's just me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but The Abyss, those movies aren't the James Cameron movies, but they're not on Blu-ray. It's so strange. I didn't realize that the abyss wasn't on there. I figured yeah. that would be a, a, a one of the first ones they did. I yeah, it's very strange. Well, hopefully one day we get a Blu-ray. Yeah. Blu They're just saving um, it. They're holding on to it. Yeah. So when you <laughs> slowly started getting into horror later, what were some of the movies where you were like, you're feeling it? You're like, yes, okay. Uh, a lot of my friends when I got to college in film school and they realized I hadn't seen horror, they were like, we got to catch you up, man. So I watched a lot of the, I watched like Friday the 13th movies. Yeah. Uh, uh, Halloween was... When I saw that one, I was like, yup, suspense, awesome. Uh, like a lot of the John Carpenter stuff. The Thing is now one of my all-time favorites. Um, Classic. Yeah, man. And, you know, all the, all, the, all the old John Carpenter stuff. The Nightmare on Elm Street movies were surprisingly, uh, those hit me pretty hard, you know? Nice. they're just so strange and so out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then, and then, you know, once I got into that stuff, I started discovering Cronenberg. And Cronenberg for me is like a huge influence. The Brood. Um, I haven't seen Crimes of the Future yet. I've, me neither. I've heard some I'm, things, I'm, but I really want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want you to as well. I missed that one, but yeah. yeah. And his son, his son does great work too so far. Yeah. Well, yeah. Possessor. I watched Possessor and that one knocked my socks off. Like I was yeah. not expecting it. It was so incredibly dark and uncomfortable and violent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one I really I like that one a lot. Nice, nice. So you're getting into more of the you like you love you love the slasher stuff, you love the monster stuff, but now you're getting into more cerebral, cerebral. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, you man. Know, but uh, so when I started putting together Bone Cold, I started pitching it as Predator and Jacob's Ladder. Right, and right, right, right. Those two movies are like very influential for me too. Those ones I watched a lot when I was younger. Jacob's Ladder actually scared me a lot more than most movies. Uh, yeah. and just like the subtle nature of it you know just like this one guy going through the only guy that can see these creatures yeah uh, but yeah. that was really influential for for yeah. bone cold and stuff but and as you can see right here predator poster right there oh baby. there you go yeah, yeah. <laughs> Represent. I'm, just, I'm just marking off your posters uh <laughs> <laughs> you've come to the right channel Billy. <laughs> that's right that's right uh but yeah that's awesome but yeah let's just pop up some of your older work here just yeah. kind of briefly uh give uh give us some backstory on some of these yeah, so this is a pilot that I did uh, with the star of Bone Cold, John Stoddard. Uh, and yeah, this is sort of like a sweet, family-friendly music drama. Like, uh, you know, yeah. it was my attempt to get back into music without getting back into music. Uh, I wrote a lot of the music for it. I, I performed the score for it. And nice. uh, we, we won a handful of awards with it at festivals and stuff. Um, but that's a project that's sort of morphed from web series to tv pilot and now there's a feature script that exists for it that i hope to make one day um but yeah that's that's sort of a project that'll never die i think <laughs> nice nice copy that or yeah. have you are you composing your uh, more of your other work have you done that are you doing the john no, carpenter thing is that something not as much I, I would love okay. to do that uh 
like for this one, there just wasn't the time and we had a really good composer on. So I would right. love to do that, but it's got to be the right situation for it. <laughs> you got to have the time too, like you said, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Apology days. We've got a comedy oh, here. Where we... <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh -oh. This, this one was a long time ago. This was, uh, let's see. Okay. So the premise of it, it's a short film. Uh, it did the festival short, uh, festival circuit for a little while. It's about a guy who goes out and parties his heart out. And then part of his routine is he wake up, wakes up the next day and just calls all of his friends to apologize for his shenanigans the night right. before. Right. Uh, and then the one particular party, he ends up making out with another girl while his, you know, having a girlfriend. So he's got to make one really difficult apology call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coffee, but, hey. yeah, a sweet little like romantic comedy kind of yeah thing. gotcha well this one it does not look like a romantic comedy and the title already i'm I'm already intrigued revolver Ooh, that was my thesis film uh i went to florida state university and this one um was a very ambitious story for them <laughs> um but it's it's it turned out really cool man like it was silly of us to try and do it but it's a proper like little action short you know and uh there's a car chase in it and there's gunfights and it's a bunch of like 20 year olds with a film camera uh, we shot it on super 16 but yeah. it was shot in tallahassee florida and you know it was yeah. it was a lot of fun to do that nice 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 and this one is this like some uh, <laughs> like like paranormal like like ghost hunters is that what this yeah is? this was pretty much um uh, an homage a spoof of all the ghost hunter shows yes uh, that, and so we're, we were doing a little reno 911 kind of style uh <laughs> and it, that was so much fun you know unfortunately that one never that one never took off either but we had so much fun making it and uh and yeah i i still talk to all those guys pretty much well spoofing those shows that's that's already gold you know, yeah. it's, it's just too much fun. And yeah. we, we love Reno 911 over here as well. Oh, uh, nice. This was on Watch It on Funny or Die here. What was this yeah. project about? This was another one that was just sort of a straight comedy, very silly comedy written by Brett Elam and Josh Logan, uh, two comedians that I met going around with the No Place to Fall project. And we met, really hit it off. We all lived in L.A. And we're like, let's just do a project together. And, yeah, they had this idea about these two this woman who's obsessed with her two dogs and the two dogs get struck by lightning and turn into full grown dudes. Uh, but they're <laughs> still dogs. And so we just like went with that. And then that was it. I didn't write that one. They, they wrote it, but I directed okay. the episodes. Wow. That sounds, that sounds kind of pretty hilarious. Yeah. And um, it ended up getting picked up by funny or die. So we had uh, like a, a fun little five, four or five episode thing. Nice. That's cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, now we're, we're shifting gears here. So this uh, is based off of Stephen King uh, work. Yeah. Here. Yep. Yeah. So uh, are you familiar with the Dollar Baby films? No. What's that one? Okay. So Stephen King has this deal that uh, he puts out to student filmmakers and starting out filmmakers where he offers up uh, a collection of his short stories, um, the rights to them for $1. And with that oh. $1 you get production rights and you can have festival rights to screen it. Um, the catch is that you can never make money off of it. You can never release it publicly. So okay. there are hundreds now, hundreds of these short films that exist based on his short stories. And there's a whole community of filmmakers that have done these dollar baby films. Um, and that's what Survivor Type was. I uh, I was lucky enough to, to get the rights to do that film. Uh, it's a 30 minute short. And uh, I made it back in 2012. Wow. And uh, I won some awards there. Yeah. It, awesome. it won an alarming amount of awards because yeah. mainly because the main actor, Gideon Emery, gives this like incredibly powerhouse performance. And uh, if you don't know that story, Stephen King himself has said, oh, yeah, that story goes a little bit too far, even for me. Wow. It's about this guy who's a surgeon trapped on a, an island in the middle of the ocean with no. Uh, food and he's also smuggling heroin and at one point he breaks his foot has to amputate his own foot while taking the heroin as a painkiller and because he's got no food he eats his foot and then the heroin wow. starts driving him mad and he starts cutting off other parts of himself to eat it and stay alive and keep that's, himself alive for wild and it is wow. an incredibly dark story and we yeah. 
really went there with that movie. And we did all practical effects. We had this guy that worked on Dexter building all these fake legs and fake hands and oh, fake nice. ear. Uh, and it was, it's a gnarly short and I'm really proud of it. And actually like, I still get asked people on the internet, know about it and try to find it. Uh, and I, I just last week, someone was like, Hey, how do I watch this movie? And I was able to send them a link to it. So yeah, that was my next question actually. <laughs> yeah, Well, it's, it's tricky because I can't put it out. Anywhere. Right. Uh, right, but what right. I've been doing is like, if you reach out like through the Facebook page, or if you find me somewhere, just ask you for a link and I can send you a private link. And I will say very clearly, do not post this publicly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's awesome, man! Congrats on that project, and we got some Thank more you. film award filmmaking awards type of projects here. Earthworm, yeah, what's this uh, one earworm. About? Earworm. Oh, excuse so, me. <laughs> yeah, earworm. Like, Sorry, you're not the first one to make that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so that one I actually just produced. I didn't write or direct that one. That's okay. a great writer, director named Tara Price, uh, and she's a friend from LA who. Um, she came to me after Survivor Type, actually. She saw Survivor Type and said, hey, do you think you can help me produce this? And it was such a cool, it's a five minute short. There's no dialogue. It's just about this man who gets a song stuck in his head and can't get it out. And he sort of does battle with this song that's in his head. And it's so cool. It's it's one of the coolest five minute shorts I've ever seen. That um, sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's really, and Ernest Thomas, who was in uh, What's Happening? Uh, is the lead guy is that who that is oh my yeah. goodness wow and he was awesome he had i think we had such a great day of shooting and like wow uh, he was so cool about it and he really loved yeah. it yeah how cool is that how cool is that, that was that? a lot no this next one i'm already like i have to see this i have to I have to ask billy i have to see this we have more horror related here tea time yeah. and so, rob they, van dam is in this yeah <laughs> So that's the same thing. That's another Tara Price short. Uh, this is another thing. She, she came to me and said, you, can we do another one? Because we had so much fun with Earworm. Yeah. And this is um, a little girl whose imagination is wild. And she is like a future crime boss, basically, treating her <laughs> toys as such. And uh, not to not to totally spoil the, the surprise yeah. for you, but the Rob Van Dam action figure at one point who turns into Rob Van Dam. Uh, oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. really cool. That's another one that's really, really fun. <laughs> yeah, it looked fun. It looked fun for sure. <laughs> uh, but how'd you get involved with the Legion of Exorcist by the Eli Roth here? Yeah, so that one is, uh, it's, it's a story that spans a decade, basically. Uh, I worked for a long time as a post-production supervisor for this company called Triage. They do a, a ton of unscripted stuff, like Food Network shows. They, uh, I worked on a car show at one point. Um, and I met this producer named uh, Trevor Byron, And he was, I think, supervising producer on this one show. He and I just hit it off on that show, and we were kind of in the trenches on it. Ten years later, he reached out to me, and he was like, hey, man, I need someone for this Legion of Exorcist show because uh, it's a sort of cross between scripted and unscripted. Uh, they're doing these roundtable interviews with these real life exorcists. So we need a story producer, someone familiar with post-production who can string these out and really build yeah. a story that way. But we also need someone who can write scripts and tell a cinematic horror story. Mm. Like, you kind of have both of those skills. Are you available and interested in this? And I was like, hell yeah, I'm interested in this. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he brought me on to that and I was able to be on set every day for it. Uh, we, I think we shot over like six or seven weeks and, uh god it might have been more than that i don't even remember now but that was a blast and that show is airing now on travel channel um and it's really it's really great because we we finished that show over a year ago uh nice, we've nice. been waiting for it to come out but yeah uh, seeing it on on tv finally man is awesome that's awesome and now we can watch it yeah for sure for sure yeah. and there's wow. a new episode today i think right now oh <laughs> Look at that. Perfect Maybe time. Not right oh, it's not but late enough. Tonight. The tonight. most perfect segue ever. To... Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we have arrived. That's right. To bone cold. Sometimes yeah. we make our own demons. Yes. And uh, I'm available for voiceover work, Billy. Just, you know, I mean, that was there. great. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But yeah. Everybody watching right now, let's go ahead and play a little clip. And uh, yeah, let's, let's 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 do this. Daddy, is 
to draw a part. Do you get scared? No. Let's do what we do. Target, Theodore Burek. You'll hike through the woods, take out the target, come right back the way you came. It's American issued. Was there a team sent before us? Did you hear that? Someone creeping up behind us? No. It's something else. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, we had to set the scene, you know, we had to play the trailer. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. You got chills. You have chills. I do. Every time <laughs> I see that trailer, I'm like, God, that's a good trailer. <laughs> uh but yeah, congratulations on you. uh you know creating the film and getting out there and it you know it being made and now it's coming out everywhere. I mean, like that's you know, I had another filmmaker on here, he was a great guy, and uh he was he always says any movie, no matter what budget it is, big, small, no budget, any movie that actually gets made and released is a miracle. <laughs> yeah. No, I like, I feel very, I'm so happy with the way that it's turned out and the way that it's coming out. I think it's just absolutely ideal. And I'm, I'm looking back and there are so many points where it could have just not happened. You know, mm -hmm. there are so many things that, that could have gotten in our way Things that did get in our way that we had to work around um but you know I, I absolutely agree any movie coming out is a miracle i feel like especially now you know that studios and stuff they're shelving movies that are done you wouldn't think that a major 90 million dollar movie is going to get shelved but that's that's what we're dealing with now so like yeah having this come out in this way like i'm i'm very happy it's been a long time coming so awesome awesome and congrats on the premiere uh how did it go it was great man you know i Try not to think about it too much, but like five minutes before every screening, I always get this like really nervous pit in my stomach. Like, oh, they're gonna hate it. It's gonna be yeah. dead silent in the theater. But you know, thankfully, uh, our LA premiere just this last week um, was a packed house. It was a really engaged audience. Everyone was gasping and shrieking and nice thing. And yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it made me very happy. It was nice. a really good response. Well, congrats, congrats, and and. Over here at the Jacksonville Festival, yeah, did some. Yeah. Looks like you did some Q and A there as well. Yeah, so we went down. Our our world premiere was uh, Dances with Films in New York. Uh, that was in December, and then uh, that other guy there is my buddy Tim Driscoll. He runs the Jacksonville Film Festival. So we went down there. We did this really great Q and A with him. We we talked for a long time about the movie. Uh, that was another great crowd. Nice. And uh, and then, yeah, and then we've been sort of waiting for the release, and uh, we were able to do this LA premiere uh, earlier this week. And then I'm right now I'm in Maine. Uh, we're going to be doing three screenings up here um, because we we shot up here, so we're kind of premiering it for this community that really nice. helps it uh, right before it comes out. So yeah, all right, yeah, that's awesome. I got Dan here. He says cool. He enjoyed the trailer there. <laughs> uh, but yeah let's let's uh watch it again let's do a little screen share action and then by all means billy uh give us your your thoughts and some common commentary yeah a little, little behind the scenes knowledge here hold on let me make sure right. it's big enough for us there we go yeah yeah and i'll be i'll be i'll be talking to you know me because <laughs> i really enjoyed the movie uh especially um uh, this sequence here, which I will not spoil, but this whole uh, set piece here was this difficult to film. How long did it take? Uh, we one day we shot this whole scene in one day. It no. was a really really difficult day. But we had so this whole squad right here, save for the guy in the middle, 
yeah. uh, is the SWAT team for Southern Maine. They are the official SWAT team for Southern Maine. So they all, uh, and we just had a hookup with the, one of the guys here. We were filming on his property. And yeah. he asked one day, he's like, do you need any like bad guys? And I was like, yeah, we, we're going to be casting for a militia. And he was like, do you want me to just bring my entire SWAT team? I was like, yes, I do. That's awesome. So, they're uh, all the men and women here. Like, yeah, these guys are. Made, so these guys are the real deal. The real. They, like, yeah. Actors. Nice. They walked on set and they saw our two Navy SEAL sniper actors and they were like, mm, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to show them how it's done. But yeah, yeah. I, I love this scene. Uh, but um, this character right here, I don't know, might be the MVP of the movie for me. Yeah, she's <laughs> awesome. She did, so that she is Elise Burgreen. And she is a good friend of mine. Uh, she was also my babysitter for a while. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And so <laughs> has she, she acted is, a lot before? Yeah. She does a lot of stuff. She's a really great actress. And yeah, she uh, was, she was great in this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, initially, um, again, without getting too spoilery, she had a big scene where she was, had this whole dialogue with her two kind of henchmen. Yeah. Uh, but our editor came in and watched the movie and he goes, you know what? You don't need all this dialogue. You have one powerful look from her that says everything you need to say. And he was absolutely right. And uh, people respond to her character so much as, with with so little. So oh, yeah. her performance is powerful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially when she gives that look, uh, when mm -hmm. she comes across a fallen comrade. Um, yeah. it's, I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, not, it's not good. It's not yeah. good for our two no, uh, shit is going protagonists. Down. It's, not, it's not good now. Uh, but yeah, speaking of performances, man, Jonathan here, mm -hmm. uh, great job, man. Great job. Yeah, he he is he is really really good, and you know he comes from he was on a soap opera for a while. He yeah. does a lot of Lifetime movies, Hallmark movies. He was just in I think like three different Christmas movies. Really? Uh, yeah. So when so I it, called him for this, he yeah. was like, "You do you think I can pull off a Navy SEAL sniper?" And I was like, "Yeah, dude, I I know you, you know, and I know what you can do. Like, let's just go. We're we're gonna push you. It's gonna be hard, but like, we'll get there." Uh, wow. and, and he he really crushed it, man. Like he does some really intricate stuff in there. That's hilarious. Uh, because I was getting ready to ask, so what other action movies has he been in? <laughs> and he's a, but, but that shows how, how how good of a job he did in the film. You know? Yeah, he's done I know he's done a, a handful of fight scenes. I know he's had a couple uh intense intense moments on screen, but I don't think anything this uh this in depth. Right. Yeah, and this was a this was a lot. You yeah, know, uh, what this character goes through in the film, mm -hmm. uh, not just dealing with the horrors of war, but other things. And, yeah. you know, he uh, he really I'm sure for as a performer, it was really a lot for him to do, but he killed it. He did a great job. Yeah, he's yeah, I think, you know, the, the thing I hear most after people see the movie is like your actors are great. Like the all the performances across the board are top notch uh, and they they really are. Everyone in it is fantastic. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, let's keep it rocking and rolling. But, yeah, what? Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> what was what, that? What? What's going on? There's something, something. There's something. Is there something there? I don't know. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got some. We got something in there, and it, it doesn't look good. It does not look good. I think anybody would freak out, no matter how yeah. badass they are. They would be like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> This is kind of a moment right here. This is one of the sort of inspirations for the movie is like this just creepy monster in the distance. Yeah. Uh, and so like we we have a lot of those kind of moments in the movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's it's funny because uh, like Mother Nature, <laughs> the, the, you know, the forest, for example, could be a beautiful looking uh, place, but then yeah. very haunting at the same time you know what i mean so yeah yeah i've always been a little creeped out by the woods and i was born and raised in maine and my family was all hunters you know and, and right they like to go hiking and stuff i've been very much indoor kid reading books watching movies playing music yep uh, that's me always been a little creeped out by the woods yeah <laughs> yeah it's like nah my wife would do that like she would, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like tomb raiders you know laura croft she wants to there you go she's adventurous and i'm just like yeah <laughs> You want to climb that tree, huh? I'll wait till you come down. I, I got yeah. you down here. All right, I got have you a great here. time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, how uh, how long did um, Jonathan have to train for this character? You know, we didn't have much time from uh, the the conception of the story uh, to when we were shooting. I think I had the idea for it maybe 
20, uh, 2018, November, 2018. And we were shooting by February, 2019. So I know that he went to do a lot of weapons training on his own. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was fast. It was really fast and furious. So we were doing a lot of stuff, uh, out there. A lot of it was just, Hey, you guys are in the woods now. Right. Figure right, it out. right. <laughs> yeah. Copy that. Yeah. Yeah. And the family did a good job too. The little girl and uh, his wife. Yeah. So the little girl actually uh, is her name is Trinity Bliss. She is an absolute movie star. She was in Avatar. She's in the Avatar sequels. She's the the little girl. Uh, oh wow, that's two, two, that's think, hilarious. Since I meant, mentioned Avatar I, earlier. Was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and she's. Oh, funny. I mean, she came on to set, man. She was nine years old, and she was like pitching me ideas, and I'm like, that's. A, really good idea let's do that <laughs> and she yeah. was a pro so she's like really smart she was already ahead of everyone basically right yeah we were all very intimidated by her <laughs> and and the mom she didn't even have to try out for it she just walked in i got the part that's it <laughs> <laughs> she directed the back out of it uh no the mom too is played by jen ko is another great actress who's on uh she's on kung fu and she was just in uh the netflix show the last thing he told uh, the last thing he said to me um yeah, so she she's fantastic as well. Nice, nice. Copy that. Yeah, the beginning too um, of this movie really, really set the tone. Yeah, the you know right uh, off yeah right off the bat really set the tone for how the movie's gonna feel. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great opening yeah. right here. Thank you. I thought there was something really cool about the irony of starting a movie called Bone Cold in the Desert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, the other actor's name, what's his name again? Matt Monroe. Matt. Yes, yes. He's Him another and... one that's like he I feel like he gets scooped up by someone big. He's going to he's going to do big things cuz his performance in this is just electric the whole time. Yeah, I was going to say, I was I was going to ask, I was like, did, did both of these guys known each other? Have they worked together before? Because their chemistry was really good. They have, actually. Wow. So, All right. so they had just worked on a movie right before this. And I didn't yeah. know that when we cast Matt. But John brought Matt in for the audition. And then when we cast him, he's like, yeah, so he and I just, just did a movie together. <laughs> wow. Okay, it makes sense. It makes sense. But yeah, he yeah. was... He did. He did some things in the in the movie that re really was cracking me up. His character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, back to John killing it. And and did you want to go into a little bit about the 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 theme without spoiling anything? Yeah, I mean it. it uh, so the film deals a lot with PTSD, um, and I think it, how how it's sort of formed, where it comes from, how it follows somebody. Um, it takes a lot of unexpected turns. I think it starts in one place and gets to a point where you're kind of like, where is this going? Yeah. Um, and when you realize where it's going, it's very, oh shit, you know, we don't, I don't want to go there. <laughs> right. Copy that. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's a very delicate kind of sticky subject to talk about. But, um, you know, I, I figured early on, once I realized that's what we were dealing with and that's what we were talking about, yeah like, let's just do it we got to dive right into it um and yeah. so uh, that's a lot of it is uh very surreal very strange very creepy um yeah combine that with a lot of big action and mm -hmm. that's oh, yeah. how we got here yeah yeah where's this location at here this is in skid row in la this is a basement in an office building um and it was a very, very dangerous part of town. So we had to be really careful when we shot there. Right, uh, right. But amazing looking location. Yeah, yeah. You know, this this whole thing, this this colonel uh, played by Sean Sharma, another great actor who's on the show, The Chosen. Um, he uh, plays this guy who is very apathetic toward the well-being of the guys he's sending on this mission. Oh yeah, uh, big time. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, in a big way, like that, his attitude. That's he's kind of the villain of the the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, this there was no better location to have a shady mission like this be set up and kind of yeah. put forth with this old crappy projector and <laughs> pictures. Oh, actually, this is a fun anecdote. I want to tell you that mug sure. that's there that he's holding. 
Yeah. I remember the the uh, production designer, Alex Wilt, she called me. She's like, what kind of mug do you want? And I was like, I hadn't really thought about what kind of mug, but yeah. get me the douchiest mug you can find. And she totally did. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like every time he comes out with this douchey looking mug, I'm like, yes, she crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look at these guys, man. Oh, yeah. No, I amazing. reacted the same way they reacted when they were asking questions about the previous team that yeah. went out before them. And what just happened, you know, yeah, shady stuff, and they yeah. know it's shady, but yeah, can but they really turn away? It's the, yeah, it's the job, right? They gotta, go, yeah. they gotta go to work, yeah. Uh, but yeah, beautiful. So this was filmed in Maine. Yeah, everything is in uh, Southern Maine. Yeah, beautiful cinematography, man. There's some gorgeous shots yeah, for sure. Thank you. That's sure. uh, that guy walking by there was my dad. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How cold was it when you were filming? Oh, man. It was, I, I believe it was negative 13 one of the days. Right. Uh, so it was bone cold then. It was bone deep <laughs> cold, yes. No, it was, a lot of the cast and crew were from California, except for okay. Matt is from Vermont, so he knew what was up. But pretty much everyone else, they got there and they were like, what is this hellscape? Why do people live here? This is terrible. Um, and they were kind of asking, like, why did you drag us all the way out here for this? But then when they saw the footage, they said, okay, now we get it. Let's let's do it. Exactly. Um, yeah, because yeah, uh, our DP, Ben Meredith, did a fantastic job with, with capturing a lot of these images. Is it mostly peaceful <laughs> out there in Maine, for the most part? Yeah, yeah. Really quiet, really, yeah. really chill, really calm. Um, yeah. That was a nice change, actually, from being in L.A. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's like at this point, I uh, I wouldn't give uh, two shits about how bad or the weather is if it's a peaceful place to live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. All right, back to the movie though. Yeah. Ooh, finding yeah, man. finding a previous dagger on the floor here mm -hmm. in, in the snow, left behind. That's hilarious. That's your dad, man. That is so. Funny. Yeah. Hey, he use them. Use use them. You got them there, right? That's exactly my use those family. Use those family members. <laughs> my mom and my dad both have roles in the movie, significant roles. Yeah, man, it was it, it was tough shooting out in the cold though, because you know, so you saw in that last shot, it's snowing. You could be filming out there, and it'll be snowing one minute, and it will stop snowing when you have to do another take of the same scene. And you got one shot where there's snow, and another one where there's not snow. Yeah, and it wow. sort of wreaks havoc on editing, but. You know, you make it work. You figure out how to make it work. Oh, yeah. The price of beauty, you know? Yes. Oh, shit. What's that? Uh, something Something is going God wrong. damn it. <laughs> That's another great shot. Let me go back a little bit. Let me see if I can catch it. Ah, damn it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah that, that, this... I don't know. I, th I think it's time to go. I think it's time to <laughs> abort. <laughs> yeah, really? mission over, man. It's like, time I'm to done. abort. We couldn't do it. We resign. No, uh, the, we're, these we're scope here. shots, uh, uh, we have so many of these scope shots through the whole movie. And I, I knew that we were going to have just a ton of them. So, uh, I mean, so much of the story is told through John's scope. Yeah. And uh, so we really worked hard to nail down what these effects were going to look like and feel like. Um, and uh, yeah, when we got to it at the end of the day, uh, the, the effect we landed on is really visceral in a way you know you can kind of see the edges of what's going on uh you see this magnification you're looking off into the distance uh it really gives you a sense of uh depth to yeah. to every scene um so i was really proud of how all the scope stuff ended up looking oh yeah it looked great and you know what it reminded me all the stuff that i enjoyed in the film reminded me especially this kind of stuff of one of my favorite action suspense movies sniper Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I purposely did not watch Sniper while we were making this. <laughs> I, oh, okay, I, I, okay. I didn't want to accidentally steal anything. I wanted to. You did I, it. I, you did it. You did. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah, good. You did. Because I have seen Sniper a long time ago, and it's yeah. great. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do definitely our own thing. Yeah, Sniper is one of those movies where it, I feel like it's just forgotten. You know, like there's been yeah. there's, there's, been there's been five billion there's been five billion sequels yeah <laughs> but there i was feel one like that came out when we were making this i'm pretty sure probably yeah probably yeah <laughs> i mean i own a lot i own some of them i still haven't even watched them yet but the first one's a classic but yeah back to this yeah. uh back to the movie here um how about the night shooting was that difficult all the night yeah stuff? so i'll tell you man we knew we were going to be out there in the middle of the woods we did not bring a lot of equipment with us yeah uh, 
we had four quasars, four little tube lights that lit everything at night. So Ben Meredith, our DP, had to get really clever and creative with how we were going to make this look. And, you know, we just leaned into the idea, all right, there's going to be a lot of the background that falls into black. And we were like, great, that's totally fine. I love it. Um, yeah. And so all the night stuff looks really good. I, I couldn't even really tell you how because Ben is really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because usually a lot of times, you know, people only have a certain amount of budget, right? They have to do the yeah. whole day for night shooting kind of filter, you know. Yeah. But this was look, this was this was all legit, and it made things a little bit more suspenseful and creepier because, you know, we never know what's in the darkness, right? That's what that's why yeah. people fear the dark because you don't know what's in there, right? Yeah, and that's that's why this scene uh, where things really start to get crazy and they're starting to realize that this this creature could come from any direction. That's yeah. why this is set at night to add like this level of, we don't know where it's going to come from. We cannot see it coming. Yeah. Uh, and just thematically that works as well. Like, you know, I, I think uh, you're, you don't see where this monster is coming from. Right. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, pro I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but Jonathan's performance was so good. It was so yeah. good in the movie. Yeah. He's, he's going to be hearing that a lot. <laughs> uh again without spoiling anything i loved yeah. the uh little foreshadowing here oh thank you this that yeah. was great man yeah thank you very much this was this is a sort of key to the theme of what's of what's happening and kind of yeah. their dynamic uh wife is an artist she paints this picture and you know once you sort of realize and understand everything that's going on with john you realize his wife knew what was going on with him or at least had an inkling of an idea and so yeah you know these little nuggets of uh of character and and uh mm -hmm. I, I i'm trying to avoid saying they paint a picture of everything but that's yeah. what they paint a picture of what's yeah. happening but yeah there's definitely some tense uh uh some tense moments i mean you you get some you get some cool acting. there you go the mvp in the movie Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of my oh. one of my favorite shots is that shot of the the shell falling down to the ground from the rifle uh after she reloads and that's, you know, several several uh factors going into that one. Let's see. But yeah, you uh uh that you guys man. looking for some blood and Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. You guys looking for some blood and gore. It's in here. There's there's yeah, stuff in here. You're going to oh, get yeah. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was all uh, these two guys, Brian Hillard and Matt Cunningham. They are, you know, Hollywood pros. They've been on a lot of stuff. They do a lot of blood work for, like, Tarantino. And, um, you know, I met Brian Hillard uh, a long time ago on a zombie project and uh, called him for this to, to design the creature, to build the creature. And uh, he also performed the creature. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Copy that. He's, he's the guy that did, if you're a Walking Dead fan, He's the guy that did the well walker from season two. And so he built that, designed it, built it, performed it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was pretty iconic. Yeah. He's talented. Yeah. Yeah. Were you going for a certain look or you were just pretty open-minded? I was really open-minded, but I, I had a specific idea for how it needed to feel. Um, yeah. And so what I talked to him about was it needs to be creepy, not in your face, scary. It needs to be more of a silhouette. Um, and he actually, um, you know, again, without getting too spoiler, he works with vets and he works with, uh, you know, people suffering with, from PTSD. A right. lot of the times what they do uh, is they'll have these guys draw their fears. They'll they'll draw their their feelings and emotions. And a lot of the time they draw these creepy monsters. And so oh, wow. his inspiration was pulling directly from that idea. Gotcha. Um, and so that's how we end up with this uh, this this crazy looking black ribcage, disgusting looking monster. Yeah. Yeah, copy that. Yeah. Uh, but the 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 main thing for me personally, what drew me to this, especially after watching the trailer and then watching the movie, was really uh, my favorite part of all of it. I mean, I, you know, samurai guy. I love the gore. Yeah. <laughs> I love the violence. I love it's I love the action. Do, I love the action. Uh, I love the little horror elements here and there. But really, what I really loved the most out of this whole movie is the suspense. Oh, thank you. The suspense you. building, you know, when they're going in searching, like this scene right here, when they're going in searching the the house, you know, all these little scenes like this, they just work so well, you know. And oh, uh, if cool. you guys are, 
everybody watching, if you guys are into suspense uh, films, thrillers, then you got to check out uh, Bone Cold for sure. But yeah, both of these guys, man, they <laughs> work so good together. Yeah, uh, and and it's you know for so much of it, it's two man show. It's just the two of them. Yeah, in the yeah. woods doing this mission, yeah. and so they it's so much relied on them. Yeah, <laughs> I know what shot's coming up now. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Thin the herd, bam! Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the actor here, th this gentleman in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Where uh, where'd you find him? Okay, this is a great story actually. Okay. So okay. when we got to Maine, we did uh, an extras call. And we said, hey, we need a bunch of people for extras in this bus scene, right? Yeah. Uh, this is a little Easter egg for anyone who hasn't watched it yet. This guy, his name is Duncan Perry. Uh, very sweet man. He was in the front of the bus, uh, in the bus scene. And we met him on that day. And he happened to mention that he speaks Russian. And we hadn't cast this part yet. And we said, do you want, do you want to come back a day and play a different part? <laughs> yeah. And he said, oh, yes, absolutely. So yeah, he we met him on the day in the, that we were shooting in the bus, and you see him right in the front, and then he comes back at the end. <laughs> wow, that's that's hysterical. Yeah, that's, that's something. I mean, no one would ever pick up on that unless I just say it out loud. But that's yeah. one of my favorite things is like he's in it a couple times. Nice, nice. How fun, how fun. And this is what is this some facility here? This whole area. This is an abandoned dog kennel. Oh uh, wow. Okay. And, uh, it just happens to be owned by a, uh, a friend of the family my extended family and uh yeah we were looking we had a location that fell through at the last minute and so we started asking around and this is why shooting in maine was so awesome uh, yeah they just offered this up they said yeah come on by come on by and shoot no one no one's doing anything tomorrow and so we just had this beautiful i think it was like god like 20 acres of land and really we only yeah. needed this little yeah. bit but that's why this scene is so sprawling and open and big because we were able to be on the top of this hill uh in the middle of the snowy uh woods nice yeah. looks like it's like a compound yeah it worked perfectly yeah and that was yeah. a, that was a pretty intense scene i enjoyed that awesome. uh but yeah here we got more suspense yeah. scenes right here which i can't can't talk about but we're gonna keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah man i loved shooting that glow stick scene it was just reminding me of predator a little bit you know if it yeah. needs we can kill it you know you got the predator green blood you know oh yeah uh, yeah yeah but uh it's yeah it's great the... stuff there's a there's a sequence in there that's just straight David Lynch. Uh, that was him with the blood on his shirt, you know, just slow motion, really creepy, really surreal, really big building audio. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nice. Or I like to think it's David Lynch anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, ho, that scratched the suspenseful action thriller itch, baby. That's oh, right. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, we have a question here. Oh, look at Brandon's giving thumbs up. That's right. Ah, thumbs up. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, we have a question here for you. Uh, says here, uh, what's your advice for filmmakers to get funding for their movies? Oh, man, that, that is a question I wish I could answer. So this one uh, was pretty much self-financed. Uh, and I am by no means a wealthy man. So I was, uh, you know, we we shot this movie in chunks and we we kind of finished it in chunks. So it would uh, it was very low budget uh stretched out over a very long period of time so we kind of just yeah. produced it as we could um that's why we we shot uh all the main stuff at once so it was a big lump sum there uh and then i had to recover for a while and work uh through the rest of the year and then right saved up enough to shoot in the fall of 2019 uh and then you know same thing in the beginning of 2020 uh and then you know pay for post-production as we were going a lot a lot of it because pandemic hit right at that point and uh a lot of it just fell to me anyway so i did so much of it myself um, yeah and yeah. once we got you know by, by the time we got to things that i needed to pay for sound mix color correction um visual effects all that stuff i i'd saved up a little bit more to be able to pay for that stuff so um funding man i'm still trying to figure that one out but i <laughs> i do think i do think now with the with how bone cold is gone with the success of that and everything i've got the attention of some people who are the money people who know where to go who to talk to who have those connects um i almost i hate to say like make a movie <laughs> like that's the way yeah. that's the way to funding but right. you know it, i got that advice more than more than once is uh, you know the world is a different place once you have a feature under your belt whether it's good or bad whether it 
works or not, whether it gets distribution or not, like the world's a different place at that point. Yeah. Um, Even if it's a short, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the world of shorts is a strange one. Um, some people will completely disregard them as nothing. And some people will see the potential in them and the and the filmmakers behind them. So yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tricky. Like Survivor Type, as as well as it did, and as proud as I am of it, um, I, I don't know if it necessarily led to bone cold happening or would have led to anything happening, you know? Um right, right, right. because I think people watched it and liked it, but no one, no one at any point was gonna give me money based on it. Right. Right. So it was, it's a, it's a tricky world, man. Yeah. But you know, sometimes it works in people's favor, right? They, they make it Absolutely. short. People could see what they're capable of putting yeah. together. I'm sure. Hey, it's like a, putting it on a resume, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, and the other thing is a lot of production companies will, will, if they like a feature idea, they'll say, all right, let's give you money to go out and make the, a short version of it to see yeah. what you can do to see what the movie, like a proof of concept kind of thing. Right. Um, so that happens quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, whatever gets your foot into the door, you know, yeah. I, have a, I have a buddy of mine who directed a few films and then he stopped directing and then he just wrote a script for a film that got a horror movie that got made. And then that got his foot back in the door to start directing again. Yeah. And now he's back to directing movies again. So I'm very proud of him. Yeah. Everyone's got their own weird, twisted path, you know, to where they're getting yeah. to. Yeah, for sure. But uh, hey, is there anything else you got coming up, or are we on the we're on the hush? Anything coming up uh, right, as of right now, or we're just well, still focusing on pushing Bone Cold as of right now? Well, I'm getting Bone Cold done right now. I mean, we, I've had a lot of conversations about what's next. Um, I do think there's going to be something coming um, after the writer strike is done, after we yeah. get all that stuff figured out. Action related, uh, horror related, a combination. Yeah, I mean. It'll definitely be in that darker space. It'll definitely be horror. I mean, I think my forte is suspense, and I think that that kind of action suspense. Yeah. Uh, so it'll it'll be something in that of nice. that mixture. Nice. Well, Samurai Guy in the Movie Dojo Army will be there uh, awesome, for man. sure, for sure, man. But yeah, well, this was a blast. This was a lot of fun, my friend. Yeah, man. This is great. Yeah, man. And uh, this is your second home now. You know, you had Love me it. at you had me at Lethal Weapon and True Lies. That's it. We're, bro <laughs> we're brothers now. We are related. Yes. Love it. Um, hey, don't forget, guys. Pre-order Bone Cold comes out June 13th, I believe. Blu-ray yep. digitally, uh, DVD, all that stuff. So you can pre-order it now. Check it out for sure. If you guys good are special into... features on it. Yes, yes, yes. Special features, all, all that good stuff, all the trimmings. Yeah. Why? Because the almighty will go USA. Uh, they always deliver. That's right. Shout out. To that company, man, you're in good hands with uh, Wellgo. I was thrilled when we started working with Wellgo. Yeah, I just yeah. looked at their slate of movies and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the perfect spot for it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, yeah. before we wrap it up, uh, is there anything you'd like to say to your followers? Uh, just thank you for watching, man. Like, uh, there, this is such a, a this has been an absolute blast. This has been so much effort uh, by a lot of people, and I think. You know, I'm in a the rare position of a first time feature director who's happy with their work, <laughs> and I'm just glad to celebrate it with people. Um, yeah, I mean, check out the movie, check out the work of everybody in the movie because everything else they've done is pretty fantastic, and these are some very talented people involved in this. So nice, copy that, copy that. We will be there, man. That's right. Future films coming from. Mr. Hansen himself. Suspense yes, action is what we love here on the channel. We will definitely be watching and keeping up, my friend. Billy, don't go anywhere, but all you badasses, hey, if you're if your first time here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the old Samurai Guy. Share this video. Get it out there. And don't forget to follow. Check all the links in the description box below so you can follow Billy on his future adventures. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. See you on the next one.